Everybody good, doing Tom. okay? Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's good, it's good, things are good. Uh, listen, I just want to let you know that uh, I got a call from trialsitenews.com and they are letting me know about a new trials that is, that is happening uh, involving ivermectin. And the cool what thing about- What's ivermectin? Well, that, that, exactly. So that's what we have to find out. Trial site news set up uh, an interview with Dr. Hold on a second. Dr. Sabine Hazen. Dr. Hazen, um, she's been doing trials for years. So they set up an, uh, an interview with her so we can find out, ask her all the questions that we want about ivermectin. And the, the cool thing is that from what I understand, there's like a, it's a cocktail of different things. It's uh, a little bit more holistic. It has uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc um, in the trials. So that, that's kind of cool. Um, are you guys good for tomorrow? Because it's, it sounds like she wants to do it right away. We're here today with Dr. Sabine Hazen. Dr. Hazen has over 22 years of experience with clinical trials. She is the CEO and founder of Ventura Clinical Trials and Progena Biome. Dr. Hazen has personally overseen many clinical trials involving disease and is now approved by the FDA in clinical trials to combat COVID-19. I should also point out that Dr. Hazen is the first female ever to be accepted in the University of Florida as a gastroenterological fellow. Correct. Doctor, yeah, thank you. that's fantastic. Dr. Hazen, uh, thanks for seeing us today. Thank you, thank you for having me. So thank tell me knows. about the, uh, the clinical trials approved by the FDA um, that involves uh, ivermectin. Yes. Uh, what, what is ivermectin? So ivermectin was actually um, thought of for scabies and lice. Uh, my sister, who, uh, Dr. Lily Hazen, who is uh, top clinical trial researcher probably in the world, has done um, numerous studies, in fact, was the big person behind Gilead's treatment for Harvoni, and she was one of the sites that actually put ivermectin into the market. In January, one of the doctors was coming from uh, China, and he uh, told me there was a problem with COVID-19, and so we started, me and Dr. Brody started looking at well, what could we do? I mean, here we are, we're like experts on microbes because we do fecal transplant, right? And also I own a genetic sequencing lab that looks at microbes. So my first mm -hmm. thought was, let's look at the sequence of the virus. Is the virus the same in everyone or is it mutating? Because what we saw from China to Italy is that it was mutating. So mm -hmm. I, the first thing I said, I turned on the gears in my office and I told uh, my, my staff, we need to look at the virus. We need to start accumulating stools because I bet you it's in the stools. And we wrote the first protocol with the IRB that got approved to look at the stools of patients with COVID-19. And actually that paper was just um, is in preprint with gut pathogen because we identified in 100% of people with COVID-19 that were tested by throat swab, we identified the virus in their stools. Mm. We didn't identify a little segment of the virus, we identified the whole shape of the virus from A to Z. So we could see the whole virus, and what we noticed is it is actually different, and in eight patients, five out of the eight were completely different viruses. Wow. Which, that was, how do you kill that? How do you get rid of that? Yeah. How do you even think of a vaccine for that? Because, you know, the process of vaccination is really to match as close as possible the virus to, to the vaccine, right? So if the virus is different in five out of eight people, how can you match a vaccine to that, right? You'd have to almost create a personalized virus right. vaccine, right? right. And, and that's the thing, that's, the, um, that's what we need to be. We need mm. to have a unified approach and a consensus that says, you know what, we've seen the data, the FDA has seen the data, they've approved it, they're, it's going to market. And that's what we're hoping to do because it would be a cheap solution. I think that's an interesting point. The, you know, the, the fact that ivermectin is a cheaper uh, solution. Right. Do you think that there's forces that might not support 
that solution for all kinds of different reasons, but mainly a profit margin. Are you putting uh, me on being, the hot seat I don't here? know. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, you know, I've been working with pharmaceutical companies for so many years. I think everybody wants to find a solution. I think everybody has their idea of what a solution is. Do you think that the ivermectin, as, a, as maybe more of a treatment rather than something that's going to, you know, uh, like a like a, a vaccine that's going to eliminate. Yeah, so it's the the hope with ivermectin, doxycycline, and zinc, which we call Zyverdox. So it's like a, almost like a cocktail. It's a of, cocktail. Yeah. Okay. So it's a formula. Mm -hmm. And so the hope with, and we're going to call it Zyverdox. Is that an exclusive that, that's here? Dr. Barodi. Can I can I yeah, run with that? Dr. Barodi. Yes, you can. <laughs> Dr. Barodi. Okay, uh, it's official. What was that again? Zyverdox. Zyverdox. I love the sound of it. So Dr. Barodi one night, I think it was like two o'clock in the morning <laughs> in Australia. And I said, okay, well, we we need to name it something. Docs. I Can't love it. Can't call it ivermectin doxycycline uh -huh. thing. So he goes, real docs like Zyverdox. <laughs> so I think Zyverdox I said, works. Zyverdox, it is. Okay. And so basically, Zyverdox is what we're working on. Holistically, I like the idea of using vitamins and yes. and, and and also with your your bio. Uh, approach to it yes. makes a lot of sense to so, me. So, and that's why, again, it's not a one pill. It's you have to give it a drug, but then you have to boost the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And so, what does vitamin C and vitamin D, you know, what do they do to the microbiome? They boost the good bacteria. Or and by and and zinc. The whole purpose of zinc is I don't know if you know the mechanism of the virus. Not really. Okay, so if you want to know about it. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so once the virus goes into your nose, your eyes, your mouth, it runs, it goes onto these receptors, which are called ACE2 receptors. And what happens is the virus sits on the ACE2 receptors. It has a spike protein, which mm. is like the little, you know, tentacles that you see of the virus. Yes. Kind of, and, and it sits on that ACE2 to receptor. It, it attaches to it. It attaches to it and it creates kind of a lock and key mechanism where it opens the door and enters the cell. And then in the cell, it runs, it, it multiplies, it replicates. And how does it replicate? It replicates by entering the stomach of the cells and then going all the way to the nucleus and using the properties of the nucleus to replicate, right? So, and to put it in layman's term, obviously, to because it's a lot more complex Please, than what yes. I'm explaining <laughs> it. But to put it in layman's term, somewhere be so the zinc stops that that lock and key because it, the zinc sits on the receptor. So the virus comes along, it cannot sit on the receptor. Ah. So you need zinc. So that's part of the formula number two, right? The other thing is once it goes into the cell, yes, you have a mechanism of action where the ivermectin comes in and instead of the virus going into the cell and linking up to other proteins, for example, mm -hmm. and penetrating the nucleus, ivermectin blocks that mechanism so that it doesn't go to the cell. It, cannot, it needs to be three little things going together. I'm trying to explain yes, it it's as interesting. layman as possible. Yes. But imagine... No, you're doing uh, well. I'm getting yeah. it. <laughs> Imagine the virus comes in, shoots out a uh, 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 letter A. Yes. And then you have letter B and C. And letter A, B, C need to be joined together to go into the nucleus, right? Okay. So what happens is the ivermectin breaks the ability to be A, B, C. So it cannot go into the nucleus. Ah, okay. So that's, that was the that hypothesis. That was the mechanism of action. I have to say the the person you know that thought about all that was uh, Dr. Barodi. I'm just the girl that likes to you know get things moving. Um, I'm like a caravan. I just keep going, going, going <laughs> until I find a solution. And I don't want to hear no, it can't be done because then I'll get it done even faster. So you know, Dr. That's Barodi great. calls me Hurricane Hazen, <laughs> and uh, and probably that's why you know he's a tornado, Tom Nato, and I'm a hurricane. So we Perfect. figured between the two of us, we could probably, you know, help with this problem. I, I think you're on the right track. L let me ask you a, a final question. What, if there was one thing that keeps you up at night, what would that be? Uh, one thing that keeps, there's a lot of things that keep me up at night. One is patience, mm -hmm. not listening to me <laughs> and, and not doing the protocol. 
because then I worry that something's gonna happen and they didn't take the pills and then they, you know, something's gonna happen to them and then of course that becomes my responsibility because I wasn't forceful enough in a way, but I have to always remind myself that I can only be someone that suggests, you know, a therapy. Right. I cannot, you know, there's freedom of choice. People have freedom of choice. Um, another thing that pushes me at night, I think, is the challenge. I don't, when people tell me I can't, that's when I become a hurricane because I, and I, and I wake up in the morning because I have to show that I can. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what keeps me up at night. Like, just keep on thinking for the solution. I'm not, I'm the person that don't look at the problems. I look at the solution. I don't look at the darkness. I look at the light. The research you're doing is fantastic. Now, do you actually do the, the, the trials here and the, the research here in this building? So we send the boxes to the patients. Uh -huh. uh, we do all the coordinating, the paperwork, the monitoring, right. the preparation of the boxes, the analysis of the stools here in this office. I would love to take a look at that. See? I would okay. love that. Sure. Okay, go. great. Uh, all right. Um, do I need like some kind of hazmat suit or anything or? Hey. How are you? So Carlos is my right hand on this study. Okay. He basically calls all the patients and he makes sure that they have this little device where, um, which is a halter to monitor their heart for 24 hours for 10 days. Okay. And so they get hooked up and he calls them and he makes sure and looks at their heart from their home to our computer. So you can see what's going on with the subject remotely. Yes. And monitor their their condition and how they're doing. Yes, we get we get it. Wow, this is uh this is quite a place you have here. So I just want to stop yes. here to kind of show you. Yes. After the research is all done, we do what's called an abstract. And so we'll be I'll be speaking about what I found in my findings, etc. From there, it becomes a manuscript. Once you've, you've uh, presented it to the meetings, yeah. then it gets published as an abstract at the American College of Gastro. And then from there, it becomes, um, we write it up as a big manuscript. And then that wow. takes anywhere from a month to a year to get approved. That is very exciting. So it's very slow. The process of research, you have to like do the research first, which can take anywhere from six months to a year. And then you have to submit it, which by the time these meetings come to, to happen, it's six months to a year also. Uh, and then from the time that um, the paper is um, going into a paper in a manuscript, it's another year. So from the moment you do the research, a simple study like this, looking for stools uh, of patients with COVID to, is going to take about three years to get into a manuscript. Really? So we're really on a speed track. Yeah. With this so thing yeah, we're trying wow. to speed track it. I, I felt that this data was so important that I couldn't wait till October 23rd. All right, so what do we have here? This is the lab. Yeah. So this is where all the specimens are kept. This is where you keep all the specimens. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is the library and the office of my scientist. And um, all these books were the property of Dr. Sidney Feingold, who wrote the book on anaerobic bacteria. So this oh, is his yes. book. There it is. Yeah. And so he had all these frames that are on the wall. He passed away at 97 years old playing with microbes. And then he would say, let me tell you the secret that has led to my goal. My strength lies solely in my tenacity. And it's so go. true because so many people want, want, want. Yeah. But they don't do the work. You've got to do the work. You've got to put the hours in order to get what you want. Yes. And that's really the secret. Dr. Hazen, I am so happy Thank to talk you. to you Thank today. You. Thank you so much for having us. My pleasure, us. my pleasure.